Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Red Dead Online. If you enjoy this video, please get a job working for your country's government and whenever you're interrogating someone, use my audio to keep them awake, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. I load in still fat, but did you know towards the end of the Renaissance era, being fat was a symbol of wealth and beauty? So please don't hate a pudgy malacca because we all know your great great grandma would smash. Today we'll be checking out the new Naturalist update. First I converse with some other players and it's great to see the online community being as wholesome as ever. Well at least for now, things get pretty aggressive later on. My mate Maddie comes out with long white socks on to cover her desirable shins. They tease me. She gives me a friendly wave, immediately followed by several nasty taunts, I'm shook. I respond with a brave shove and she counter responds with a way too far shoulder charge to the ground. A classic female gamer toxicity. I turn to retail therapy and buy a new jacket, but I'm so poor so I decide to do a quick bounty. I start off being stealthy with the bow and arrow and it's important to capture bounties alive for the maximum reward. I achieve this goal perfectly. And trust me, he's fine, he's just having a non-breathing power nap as napping reduces fatigue and is also an effective way to boost concentration levels. I receive a $3 payment which just isn't going to cut it. I then remember for once in my life, I actually did something productive last video. I brewed up a batch of moonshine, so let's go sell it because fueling people's struggle with alcoholism is honest work. This is the guy who brews my moonshine, and as you can probably guess, he's a bit of a ladies man. He's got the overweight moustache combo that leaves Whammon weak at the knees. Seriously though, history tells us that only good honest men have moustaches and also that communism most certainly always works out for everyone. We deliver the shine without any trouble and get paid a cool $226 which is perfect as I can now afford to go shopping. We ride back to the general store at Rhodes and I purchase myself a fresh new red military jacket. Finally I can have a unique look and be an individual that stands out from the pack. Maddie then proceeds to buy the exact same jacket as me and beanie which is just wow. I guess this is kind of cute but her intentions were not pure. I would say something about it but I don't want to be pushed over again as for a big gorgeous man I bruise easily, physically and emotionally. Okay yes, the naturalist update, let's go. And can we also just appreciate how insane it looks when the rain rolls in as you're riding along on your horse with your side chick? No I'm kidding, look. Maddie and I are both in long term stable relationships. Her with a cool guy and me with anime that's been banned in most countries. Kidding, I've actually been with my girlfriend for six years, that's pretty insane. Before you ask, don't worry, we sleep in single beds in different rooms on opposite ends of the house and only see each other in person when we're carpooling to Sunday service. We arrive at the depressing little town of Strawberry. To give you a brief rundown of this new role, this incredibly good looking fat moustache man here loves hunting animals and wants us to help him. This woman Harriet loves animals and wants us to save them from the hunters. She then sprays chloroform in my face which is kind of rude and I wake up in a forest still a virgin so big win there. Maddie's here too waving at me which is welcomed. She then shows me her second wave variation where she bends over to show off her booty. I'd do that wave too but I genuinely don't think the world's ready. We decide to go and have a cool word with Harriet about the whole knocking us unconscious with narcotics issue. She set up a little tent and asks us to go and free some animals from local poachers up the road. She also didn't say sorry. Wow, some people and basic manners, SMH. The poachers also happen to be in the world's spookiest forest where bears chase you down for fun, it's not kosher. I decide to man up and fight the bear with a knife to prove to all of you that you should face your fears because you'll always come out on top. We arrive at the poachers camp and these men will be cancelled for all the hunting they've done. Of course I also hunt regularly but the internet has taught me that as long as I'm the aggressive one, hypocrisy ain't nothing but a thing. The last of the poachers die and it feels good to liberate these majestic creatures. You know what, going forward I'm going to be the man these poor souls need. I want all the animals of Red Dead to know that I will be their saviour, their protector. I'm going to step up and do what's right. We decide to head back to Harriet and see if she's got any other missions for us. 
At her tent, a lad called Beatats is taunting her with an animal carcass. Harriet just can't catch a break, and then a mother f***ing bear runs in out of nowhere and Randy Orton mauls young Beatats to death. You don't see that every day. He recovers well from death and is actually a pretty nice guy. Maddie even gives him a booty wave and it makes me wonder, does she just booty wave every guy she meets? I don't feel special anymore. So basically, Harriet sold me some tranquilizer bullets so I can hunt animals and take samples from them without actually murdering the beasts. Once they're subdued, you just cruise up and take some of their blood. She said not to use the bullets on small birds and I can confirm she knows what she's talking about. That being said, a world with one less non-pelican bird is a better world for everyone. Of course, I decide to test the old Trank gun out on some of Valentine's residents. This sort of ingenuity is why I'm surprised Nike haven't reached out to me for a shoe collaboration yet. Yeah, sure, Air Jordans are sick, but imagine Air Pelicans. And call me petty, but it just seems unfair that I don't have a deal yet and Michael does. The more we dive into the naturalist role, the more I realize we are absolutely terrible at collecting blood samples from animals. It's taken us like two or three species before we're just straight up hunting humans. While tracking bears, we reach the edge of a cliff. And do you ever have those moments where you decide to send it despite facing certain death? Well, I have one of those and it goes pretty predictably and my horse is now dead. When waiting for your horse to resurrect itself, you have to ride the generic scrawny nag. This is the equivalent of it being 3am and you message that girl who you know will come over, but you also know you'll regret seeing. Of course not for premarital sex, I'm talking about a late night game of guess who. The best kind of guess who. Anyway, we hate scrawny nag, so we try to kill it with dynamite, but this steed may genuinely be invincible. I have another air pelican moment and realize I can just drown the horse in the river as water solves all problems. We are doing an absolutely terrible job of defending the animal kingdom. Randomly, Madame Nazar is nearby and she's just vibing solo, what a sesh lass. I decide to see what she's selling and oh my god, for like the second video in a week, I find the modest pelican goggles in game. I must have them. Unfortunately, you need to be rank 10 in the collector role. We pick daisies because nothing helps you forget your parents are divorced like the smell of fresh cut flowers. I will admit doing this takes you to some pretty beautiful locations. And check out this hybrid bridge dam. That's impressive. Maybe I should make the organic transition to becoming a full-time bridge reaction channel. With only one flower left to collect, I spot another traveler and I enjoy greeting the good people of Red Dead Online. What can I say, I'm a friendly guy and so I proceed to give the big girl a wave and he shoots me with a sawn off shotgun. For any of my longtime viewers, you know where this is about to go. You see, I have two rules in my life. One, no crack after midday. And two, if someone kills you in a video game unprovoked, you hunt them down until they're lying awake at night, haunted by what you did to them. So I proceed to hunt down intense harp 8466. I just imagined someone playing the harp intensely and I instantly got a semi. Nothing gets me going quite like the thought of a fat man with a moustache intensely playing a stringed instrument. It's hard to know where the line is when extracting revenge, and I'll be honest, I may have crossed that line. But hopefully I've instilled some wisdom into this man about the consequences of shooting a friendly player. The last flower is out at the swamps near the gators. Learning absolutely nothing from my previous encounter with the bear, I decide to fight the gator using my hatchet. This may be my proudest moment as the gator recognizes who the alpha is here and swims away. To protect the animals, you must first earn their respect. We grab the last flower and sell the collection for $155. At last, I've secured the modest pelican goggles and your boy do be looking good. We head back to Harriet as you can apparently track legendary animals, which sounds like good clean fun. I buy some legendary animal pheromones from Stinky Harry and decide to just test them here in the forest. It's $20 per bottle, so surely they wouldn't just let you empty them out onto the ground if there wasn't an animal nearby. There are no legendary animals nearby. Wow, okay, let's just say I was pouring some out for my dead homie goldfish from year six. I do the mature thing and Google the locations of legendary animals, and apparently there's one up near Lake Owenjilla. Owenjilla actually translates to, subscribe to Modest Pelican Gaming with notifications on and like the video, please. Crazy coincidence. 
We make it to this honestly spectacular thick body of fresh drinkable water. I pour down the expensive pheromones and there are no legendary animals nearby, wow. In a world where you get paid $3 for bringing back a napping bounty target, I cannot afford to keep wasting this stuff. We need to improvise. I mean, wow, look, there's the legendary deer that no one's ever found before. Wow, so rare. This isn't a one-star white-tailed deer, this is a six-star Bambi. I realize I forgot to use the Trank bullets, I used normal regular killing bullets. Harriet is going to be disappointed, but at least we absolutely did a great job of thoroughly looking into the new naturalist role. This video is all you need to reach your max rank. Please follow me on Twitter at Modest Pelican and Instagram at Modest Pelican Gaming, and I'll protect you just like how I protected these sacred animals. And thanks for watching, you absolute legends, and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.